Carlo, I think uh, this is one game I believe we should have uh, sealed first up. Uh, should have made our life easy. I think we got about two, three clear cut chances and uh, we were in control. Obviously, we were controlling them because, uh, because of their technical flexibility. But as long as they were playing the ball in front of us, uh, they posed no danger. Uh, until we got uh, that, uh, that breakthrough uh, that uh, was got uh, by Kemit. Uh, but before that, I think we got a chance and did not take it uh, against the run of play. They got that opportunity. And uh, we're now chasing the game. We're still in control uh, as much as they were playing, but they, they did not, uh, they just kept the ball in front of us. And we're always waiting for those moments to to help them. And uh, we look like uh, uh, we were going to get the equalizer just before half time. And uh, we got the opportunity, I think, to capitalize on. And then, uh, second half, we had to change the strategy a little bit just to, to put them on the back foot and us, obviously, be on the front foot. And I think uh, we control the tempo of the game and uh, we force them to make mistakes as well. And uh, we managed to get the equalizer because we were making those runs from deep. And that's how we got the equalizer. And from that moment again, we looked like we can get the second goal. And we did, got, uh, did get the, uh, the, the opportunity to not uh, take it. And, uh, you know, uh, when you go to, to extra time now, uh, the, the legs you know, are getting heavy from the players and that lapse of concentration. And I believe that's how we, we, we considered the second goal. Though we, we, we made the players aware, you know, that uh, if they bring in sun delay, that means from dead ball situations, we'll be playing the balls uh, in the far post. So uh, we need bodies there that can pick up uh, those two, Koki and, uh, and Sandile. And uh, lots of concentration, and uh, we continue. Thank you very much, Coach. Uh, we'll take questions from the floor, just by a show of hands. <coughs> take the first one, brother. Yes. You, Lulu, Newsroom Africa. Right. Coach, um, yes, if I'd already said you, Lulu, Newsroom Africa. Um, coach, I uh, remember at different stages of the season, you were lamenting that you need a striker. You got Caleb, you scored goals, you dried up. Again, you said you need a striker. You got Saile, promising, starting to dry up again. But before you got both of those strikers, you're always saying you wanted the right profile of striker. But it seems like in important stages of the season, both of those strikers are not giving you the desired effect. Does that then mean that you have to go again and start the process at the end of the season to find the striker that will complement the way that your team plays and bury some of the chances that could have been crucial today? Uh, no, not really. Um, look, uh, we'll always want to be far. Uh, and then if you look at uh, the chances that we created today, Saile was in the right place. You know, Ash created the space for him to exploit. And he did, you know... Uh, exploit the space, uh, but he just couldn't get uh, or find the target, which is something that we can work on, you know. Uh, it's better than having a player on the field who doesn't understand what you expect from him. So he, he was in the right area at the right time. Unfortunately, he just couldn't convert. And uh, you cannot uh, now put the blame on him because of that, because uh, that's the nature of football. You know, you, wish, uh, you win some and lose some. And sometimes you, 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 you take those opportunities. And those opportunities sometimes you don't take them, and uh, when you take them, you pay the price, and uh, and, and that's why we're in this situation where we are knocked out because we did not take those chances. But I uh, cannot fault the the effort and the commitment of the, of the players today. They gave their best, they gave their all, and I'm proud of them. All right, uh, next question, please. Are there any other questions? Can we close the session? A question from News uh, News Twenty Four, Kanyiso. Oh, just wait for the mic, please. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, Coach. Hard luck on the result, Coach. It is your first season of Chiefs, and granted, first seasons are always difficult. But when you look back at this particular season, you're out of any trophy contention now. So, what does this particular result mean for you emotionally? Thanks for the question. Look, uh, 
obviously this was always going to be a difficult season even whether we were going to win one cup uh, or not uh, uh, the fact was everyone was trying to find himself uh, in terms of uh, the new players who are coming in a uh, new setup new environment and also a demanding you know environment not just you know you know environment where you can play one game well then the second game you can get away with it or uh, if you don't win games so with with, with us uh, uh, you have to perform week in, week out. And uh, uh, some of the guys, they were still obviously, you know, adjusting to that because of the demands, you know. And uh, I, I cannot blame them. Uh, that's, the, that's that's part of, you know, uh, playing for a team of Kaiser Chiefs Calibre. And, yeah, we've learned from this season. Uh, we've learned from our mistakes. And uh, we'll move on. And we'll try and rectify our mistakes uh, going forward. Got a question here. Lorenz, it is key times. I've noted you tell me. Coach, um, after you guys uh, beat Royal AM, there was obviously notable celebrations from everyone involved uh, getting Pirates. And obviously, at that point, you guys had won Pirates five times in a row. Uh, do you think there was a sense of overconfidence uh, from the squad that they, you know, the celebration linking to this result? No, I don't think so. Uh, look, the celebration was not about uh, the two parents for granted. You know, uh, it was more forever that even if it was another team, we were still going to celebrate, you know. Uh, but for us, it was not, to be quite honest, it was not a celebration. It was okay. Uh, bring it on, you know. Uh, it, obviously, uh, it's one of the big games in the South African uh, football calendar. And if you play against your 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 direct rivals, you know, and you, you always want to, you know, get the best out of the players and the players as well. They see this as the opportunity, you know, to, to showcase their talent because each and everyone today for two hours, if not uh, more, uh, South Africa, you know, came to you know, stand still uh, watching this game. So who doesn't want to be part and parcel of that, you know, it's, it's, it's history in making. So, uh Yes, unfortunately, it's just that we ended up on the losing side. But I'm, I'm, I'm still proud of the guys' effort that they gave today and and, and the commitment, you know. So it wasn't to be. And uh, we we'll move on. Uh, we we'll learn from this one. We we'll move on. Uh, we we'll try to rectify our mistakes going forward and, and give our best all the time. Uh, winning cups with Kaiser Chiefs is my mandate. You know, uh, as much as we were. In a, in, in a season where we wanted to obviously get things, you know, right first, bring in the right players, uh, uh, find a way of playing and also uh, get the, uh, uh, the right chemistry within, you know, uh, and the team and look at ourselves as to now when we move forward, how do we beef up and uh, start challenging. So I think uh, going to the semi-final of... of, of, of uh, uh, MTN 8 obviously gave us hope and uh, uh, we had the opportunity to, to seal the game again here at FNB. Uh, we ended up playing 1 1. And uh, even today, uh, it's more or less the same semi final. We had the opportunity to kill the game off early and uh, it wasn't to be. And as I said, you know, I believe going forward, I will take it in one step closer and we'll learn from this one. Maskepe, Power FM. Yes, I must get here, program. Coach, you, I think at the beginning of the season, you know, when you were making the or announcing the signings, uh, the biggest thing was to rebuild the team. That's what I think you kept on, on, on mentioning. But now yeah. there is no trophy and the Kev place is not necessarily in your hand. Now, when you look at what's left and you look at the year that you've had, how would you sum it up? in terms of what you wanted personally and also what you wanted for the club? Look, for the club, as I said, as much as we're in the rebuilding phase, we still wanted to you know, participate in CAF next season. And uh, unfortunately, as you said, uh, those chances are a bit slim, but it's all up to us again. We're not going to give up. Uh, we're playing against Super Sport. Uh, if we finish uh, position three, uh, that will give us hope, obviously, going forward uh, in terms of preparing for for CAF Champions League, you know, and years to come. Because uh, even Confederation Cup can prepare you much better. 
you know, the fact is you start traveling, it changes the mindset and also play and to dig deeper and be able to deal with many challenges, you know, of traveling all over Africa. And that's how players can grow and understand the demands of playing at that level. So uh, if it did not happen, it doesn't mean that it was a bad season altogether. Uh, I think uh, with the new squad, uh, with many also sometimes, uh, actually giving also the youngsters that coming from uh, from our own development, uh, uh, it's been a good season in some some of the things that we, we, we did right. Unfortunately, uh, results were fluctuating, uh, were not consistent, and as you said, uh, we're looking forward to the next season and we can we can do things better, we can learn from this season's mistakes and, and move on. Quick one, Velile. Yeah, uh, Coach Velile from SABC. Uh, just um, going back to, to your statement that it's, it's the first season um, in comparison, uh, you know, especially after a game like this, uh, the rivalry between the two clubs, the Paris coach is also in his first season, he's now in his second final uh, maybe he'll also win the second trophy. Uh, how do you respond to a fan who will also say, um, look at what is happening that side. It's also their first season and this is what they've achieved. Yeah, obviously, the only difference when it comes to that is us bringing in new players, you know, that needed to gel, and that uh, us also working on our, our, our chemistry, understanding. And when you look at Pirates, how many players that, you know, that they brought... Uh, uh, this season, you know, yeah, and uh, already they had a call. So with us, uh, we didn't have a call. We had we had to start afresh, you know. Uh, when you look at most of the players that were part and parcel of the team this season, some of them did not play. And take into consideration that uh, most of our key players, you know, uh, for me, very key players that could have played a huge role. Uh, even in today's game, I mean, many other games that we ended up, you know, losing, uh, they were out, uh, you know, out in uh, key players. So and those who were given the opportunity, they gave their best, and it wasn't to be, you know, it wasn't to be. So that's that's the difference. You know, we had a lot of injuries in our case uh, to key players, and now we had to chop and change the team. At some point, we played with the make, uh, makeshift uh, uh, defense. Uh, just to, you know, make sure that we consolidate and we don't drop more points. And at some point, we, we did drop points that we shouldn't have. And as I said, you know, it was the most difficult season in terms of injuries, you know, and the challenges that, that we came across uh, in making sure that we have uh, that consistency, you know, in, within the squad. Last question, Tisezo. Tisezo uh, from uh, Football Conversations. Coach, um, you've had a... Very um, solid season, um, solid first season, considering the, the rebuild um, required in the team. Um, you've had a lot of games this season that are very similar to this one, where you've had more than enough chances to make the game safe. But it seems that, um, you know, uh, that the players just can't get over the line. What sort of psychological um, adjustments are you going to make sure that you implement um, in order for results like this to not happen? Um, um, next season and, and forward, going forward. Thanks. Thanks, my brother. I think, uh, unfortunately, you are the only one that see that you know see it as a, as a solid season. <laughs> <laughs> I think a lot of people, obviously, because of the demands of uh, you know uh, playing for this team and the expectations, you know, they will see us, they will see us as, as as failures, you know, and forgetting where we come from. But I understand. I take it, you know, like a man and. Uh, Yes, I'm, I'm disappointed. I believe we could have done better. Look, we've, we've done a lot of things good, you know, uh, when you compare to where we come from, you know, changing the squad, you know, and uh, it was never going to be easy anyway. But the hands are, hands are, I said, uh, I'm, I'm very proud of the players. We are only left with two games, you know, and when you look at uh, the stats, and uh, they always say stats don't lie. You know, go and check the stats of the Kaiser Chiefs past uh, three seasons. Then you'll see that there is a lot of improvement in this squad compared to the previous squads that we, we have uh, uh, assembled. Coach, thank you very much. Let's.